Hey guys, wanted to bring you a video of Ricky Williams, A Football Life on the NFL Network. Um, so just wanted to give you a little background on what I was able to gather. I just felt like this was an interesting documentary compared to all the other players uh, that they've done so far. Uh, reason being, and I, I will go over some of it shortly, is that he had an interesting journey and um, the media depicted him differently every time. So at least we got to hear from him firsthand. So uh, he chose number 34 for Bo Jackson because he loved the two sports, baseball and football. He actually was drafted by the Phillies, uh, so he was part of the minor league. Uh, Ricky is uh, is very classy from what I could gather. Uh, one of the things I could gather was in the Cotton Bowl. Uh, he was wearing dork number in honor of him. Um, so he gave the game ball and jersey to Dark's uh, family. He was compared to Earl Campbell uh, when he was in college. Um, Ricky Williams beat out Tony Dorsett's rushing record in college. Uh, he was upset when he was in the draft that he was not the first pick and also not the first running back to be drafted. So he was a little offended there. Actually, Edron James was. So most people probably didn't remember that. Um, but most people were the trade that New Orleans did with Mike Dicka. Mike Dicka traded all his draft picks and the two, uh, number, the first round and the second round of the following year. So that was one of the biggest trades, um, compared to Herschel Walker. So most people remember that. And, um, most people also remember that those two are tied together so much that they had that Sports Illustrated famous cover of Ricky Williams wearing the dress and he, uh, Mike Dicka has this tuxedo suit. So it, pretty much they're saying that they're married and joined to the hips uh, on their career in that sense. Um, so, and the no, he signed with No Limit Records to handle his contract, but he was heavily on the incentive type of contract. He wanted to show and prove to people that not all football players only care about money and that he wanted to earn every penny uh, of his contract. So I, I got to give that up because most NFL players and athletes are not willing to do that. So that that's something I would say is very comparable. And, and that's one thing I like about Colin Kaepernick. He's trying to show, just like Ricky Williams, that they're that good. They could prove it. They don't need to worry about um, guarantee contracts and stuff like that and guarantee money in that sense uh, so he, he, yeah he wanted to be proven on what he did on the field and uh, off the field uh, traded to the Dolphins for two draft picks the, that following year uh, with Jim Haslett um, after his career season with the Miami he carried the ball so many times um, he, he just felt like he was beat up so much that he spun the globe and said this is where I'll go which ended up being Australia so I think that kind of felt like okay that's um he's getting ready for a different journey he wanted to travel more so um since he led the most attempts for two years he just uh there there was a lot that led up to his retirement uh the failed drug tests um no quarterback that was drafted in the Miami Dolphins to help him and uh, he, he took so many shots and body uh, tolls so prior to 2004 he retired since he felt a third drug test and uh, pretty much took that whole year off and was able to travel around the world learn a lot um, so Miami felt he breached his contract when he and went after him for eight million dollars and he didn't really care when he traveled for the whole year, discovered more about himself, and felt like he wanted to get back to football. Most people thought, oh, he just needs to pay for his money because Miami wanted to go after his money and all that. He didn't feel threatened to get uh, that lawsuit or anything. So when he got back, um, the $8 million was dropped. So they didn't go after him. It's just like him taking a whole year like to get his body rested up just like some wrestlers in WWE they do the same thing athletes um, sometimes are burnt out so 
don't I, I guess just saying anything's possible and that's what he did and so he served his four game suspension when he came back play for, he loved playing for Nick Saban uh, he was suspended uh, for a whole year afterwards for a fourth um, belt test he didn't want to go out like this so he actually played for the CFL and uh, midway 2007 he tore his particular muscle after serving his one year suspension so he was out uh, after midway that season so Bill Parcells comes to the Dolphins uh, to take over and he thought he was going to be out of there uh, without a job because uh, Bill Parcells a non-sense guy straight up knows what he's looking for in his players but actually he played three years with him enjoyed it and everything was really close relationship with him uh, and earned his trust so 2011 he signed with the Ravens as a free agent he got 10,000 yards um, the 26th player at the time um, with the Ravens and during his offseason Tex um, and had a conversation with Bill Parcell saying he's looking forward to next season and Bill Parcell um, had some conversations with his Tex saying um, well you can make differences in different ways and all that contribute don't ever take things granted and stuff like that and um, pretty much made him think and Ricky Williams went on travel a little bit more and started thinking about the definition of success and his measure of success is actually acquiring new skills and knowledge that's his definition of success and it's different for most people because uh, it's more of achievements and earning monetary uh, like if you're making a billion dollars that's you're successful like if you're earning more money than the other person that's how some people will uh, but for him he just wants to learn and he has a neck so he was actually uh, retired after that uh, one year with the Ravens and then the following year the Ravens made it to the Super Bowl and was a photographer there so he could want a Super Bowl ring with them he um, so he actually did some commentary with Texas Longhorn as an analysis um, play flex football in his free time so he definitely loved the game so he got into coaching uh, internship but there was um, one hurdle he needed three recommendations to get in and his recommendations were Jeff Ireland Mark or uh, Mac Brown and Nick Saban um, so he became a running back coach uh, for college and then helped a Chinese football team uh, in the World University Games in Sweden uh, for the China team and the Chinese actually that Chinese team actually gave up 197 points and they scored zero points on offense so right now he looks loving life and enjoying everything that's going on go ahead and like share comment and subscribe to help support this channel to get more reviews and more NFL breaking news and anything related to the NFL thanks